Hello everyone, welcome to Birds and Birdies. It can be really frustrating when you're learning how to use binoculars or even if you've just been using binoculars for a while but don't have good technique. You see something with your naked eye, you pull up the binoculars to look at and it's not there, it's not in your field of vision. Today I have three tips for you plus a bunch of extra bonus ones that I really didn't know how to categorize for you how to practice and be efficient and effective in using your binoculars to, so you don't miss a thing. So let's get right to it. Tip number one, everything starts at the foundation. We're gonna talk about footwork, right? The foundation. For years I taught martial arts. It was a big part of my life growing up. And the first thing you learn is how to stand. The same is true with binoculars, power, and speed and balance all come from how you're standing, like this. Yep, th that was me. Right now though, we're gonna focus on balance. I've been trying to spot a bird before and, and I have them in there, but my footing, my feet are too in line or I'm off balance and I spend more time shifting my balance, which makes the binoculars moving back and forth. It doesn't matter how good your binoculars are, how much you pay for them. If you are shaking, if you're all around shaking, then the image is not gonna be good. You have to have a solid stance and have a still thing. Uh, while we're talking about your stance, also, so you, whatever's comfortable, feet a little bit spread apart, if you need to put one slightly in front of the other, do that. But when you come up, don't go chicken wing. Don't have your elbows spread wide like this. Try as best you could, it's good camera practice also. Keep your elbows tucked in into your chest and you can almost use your, your chest as a prop to keep as still as possible. Remember, it's all about your stance. Tip number two, and remember, there's some vital tips, but I'm gonna throw those in at the end. You can't do anything without the last tips that I'm gonna mash up together. So stick with me all the way to the end, you'll love it. Tip number two is when you see something with your naked eye, and remember, we're not spotting, we're not walking around with our binoculars up like this. Okay, that's ridiculous. You need to be able to see with your naked eye and any movement that you see at that point, Okay, I see that bird in that tree or fence post or something, and my stance is good, my knees are bent a little bit, and I lock on it with my eyes. From that point on, my neck doesn't move. I don't take my eyes off the target. From there, I lock my head, my neck, my eyes stay on them. I never take my eyes off. I bring the binoculars up to my eyes and boom, he's right in the middle of my field of view. Very important. So many times we'll see something and then we look down at our binoculars and then we come back up with the binoculars. Now I'm looking all over in that magnified view more on that in a little bit, in that magnified view, and I have to search, search, search. If you find yourself in that situation, it's much better to, if you can't find it, you know it's there, take the binoculars down, find it again with your naked eye, lock on it, and go through that process again. Practice that, no movement, eyes fixed on your target, bring the binoculars up, sight your target. Actually, while I mentioned magnification, I wanna talk about that briefly. There are different types, and this video is not gonna be all about the different types, brands, styles, and powers of binocular, but just remember, the stronger the magnification, the smaller your field of view is going to be. So that is so much more critical that you have proper technique for sighting in your target. So tip number three, and this is really important, it's this little knob right here. It's called the focus knob, right? Or I like to think of it as, and I would like you to think about it as, your depth of focus adjustment. Now this took me a little while and sometimes I still forget, but I would see something, a lot of times small birds like sparrows or vireos or warblers, they're tucked in a lot of brush or they're in amongst a lot of vegetation. And 
it's hard to find them. I'll see them fine. It's like when you hold up your fingers in front of your eyes. If I'm looking at the camera and I put my fingers up, I still see the camera and my hand is blurry. But automatically I can take my eyes, my focus off the camera and move them to my fingers. Now the camera is blurry and my fingers are in focus, okay? You can do the same thing with binoculars and that's what makes them such a powerful tool. But you have to remember that that option is there, that that ability to adjust your depth of focus is there. So when I see the bird in the bush, I pull the binoculars up to look at it, okay? I adjust the focus knob to bring the bush into or the tree whatever it is into focus and i still can't see my bird okay maybe i'll reset and i see him with my eye i bring up the binoculars and i look and all i see is bush well how deep in the bush is he this happened just a little bit ago in behind our property there's a tiny little pond and i was tucked in among these thick reeds all of a sudden over my head whoosh, two wood ducks just crashed straight down into the water. They didn't know I was there because the cover was so thick. The reeds were everywhere, but I was able to, with my binoculars, and I adjusted the depth of the focus through a whole thicket of reeds onto the wood duck. And all I saw were these blurry little spindles and the wood duck was in focus. It was an amazing thing. This is not the exact example I previously described, but it does serve the point, just not as extreme. You can see that it is in light cover with some branches and twigs in the way. The autofocus did actually quite well. Manual focus would have been better, but this shows how something in the foreground can be blurred to make the background clear. It, a manual focus like this many times will beat an autofocus camera because you can fine tune to such a degree that autofocus sometimes has difficulty with. So point number three is your depth of focus knob. Be ready. When you bring your binoculars up, your hand is gripping the whole thing in a firm, none of this fingertip stuff. Okay, put it in the palm of your hand and have your finger on the depth of focus knob. In fact, if you know where that target is going to be and you're waiting for him to come out, you can set the binocular to that depth of focus preset so that when he comes out, when, he, when that bird or whatever you're trying to spot comes out, you come up, you're almost perfectly there, if not perfectly there already depth of focus knob. Before we move on to the bonus tips, one more thing about the focus knob or the depth of focus. Remember the word depth. The other day I saw a raven flying and it was being chased by a crow. It was a tremendous example of the difference in size and difference in shape between the crow and the common ra or the American crow, excuse me, and the common raven. So but they were flying away from me. Remember we called this the depth of focus knob? So when I came up, where it was at that point flying away from me, I focused on them. But as they were moving away, I had to adjust the focus because they were increasing the distance from themselves and me. So remember that when you bring the binoculars up, keep your finger there. It's not only the, the initial adjustment that you have to do, any subsequent adjustments as the, the distance either increases or decreases. Keep your finger on the focus knob. And now our last couple bonus tips, and I told you these are very important. There's three of them I wanna talk about. The first of the three additional uh, bonus tips is you have these, these are your eye cups. Almost every pair of binoculars has these and they are adjustable. If you wear glasses, if you wear spectacles on your face, you'll want them probably turned all the way in. 
if you're like me and, and you don't wear glasses, then you want to twist these either all the way out or somewhere in between. And good binoculars will have stops at different increments. For myself, I pull them all the way out. I twist them all the way out like this. And that gives me the biggest field of view. The second thing is adjusting your pupillary distance. So this will be the second thing you do. There's Binoculars have a hinge in the center between these two barrels and that allows you to widen by flattening the binoculars or if you, if you put more curve, increase that V, it narrows the pupillary distance or the PD. What, how, why that's important is because if your PD is set incorrectly, if your pupillary distance is set incorrectly in your binoculars, you won't have one vision. Essentially, it's the difference between monocular vision, that means vision with one eye and one eye, and binocular vision, where both eyes work together to form one image. So when you pull them up, two images or a lot of black on the edges and it just doesn't seem right, bring them in, bring them out until it fits your eye sockets nicely and you can see your two images join to one. So adjust the PD. The third thing that you really, after the initial adjustment, you shouldn't have to adjust at all unless something really gets out of whack or someone else is using your binoculars, is your diopter adjustment. Typically it's on the right side, the right barrel for your right eye, although sometimes I've heard that it can be on both. Okay, and now this takes an account if your eyes have any, need any corrected power that's not being corrected by glasses. You can adjust the right lens, on mine it's on the right lens, most of them I believe are, to accommodate for that lacking correction in your eye. And the way I would set that, and there's more detailed videos that you can find, the way I would set that is when I bring the binoculars up, I'm going to use that middle, that focus knob to make, I'm going to close my right eye and I'm going to make the left eye crystal clear, okay, in my left eye. Now I know it's clear using the focus knob, I'm going to close my left eye and I'm going to use that diopter ad adjustment to bring my right eye into focus while still looking at the same pinpointed target. You don't want to look and focus your left eye and then focus at a different depth of field and then adjust your right eye for that. So looking at the same target, use your depth of focus knob to bring it into clarity with your left eye and then adjust your diopter adjustment to make that clear on your right side. Now our pupillary distance is is correct. I have one image. Both the left and the right eye are tracking together. They're seeing the image plainly and clearly. If you practice these tips, do those pupillary um, adjustment, diopter adjustment, get your eye cups out before you get in the field. That's not something you need to be messing with on the fly. Practice locking your eyes, your head and your neck, bringing the glasses up. That was tip number two. And always make sure that you're in a comfortable, solid stance so you're not leaning. If you're birding somewhere that has a lot of high wind, if there's a tree, if there's a building, lean on it. Lean on it. It's amazing how much that wind will blow you. The more magnification you have, the stiller and more solid you have to be to get a crisp, clean image. Well, I think that'll do it for today. If you have any other tips or you disagree, whatever it is, let me know in the comments. I'm always ready to learn. I'm humble enough to admit when I'm wrong. But most of all, I want you to be successful in finding those birds or whatever target you are looking for out in nature. Until next time, thanks for joining us here at Birds and Birdies. We appreciate you being here and we'll see you next time. Take care.